Everybody who benefits pays on a fair basis. Um, Let me pick up on that when we're delivering, because again, if people see that they're going to be spending as taxpayers $275 million not to build a power plant, and now you're asking for more money for transit, it's Denzel Lynn one's question. How do you assure that this is accountable? Well, I mean, that's a challenge. I mean, the, there's a lot of skepticism today about how government spends money. And like I said, at our own council, we've got projects we have to deal with. We have to, if we're going to increase taxes, we have to have a compelling reason, a compelling business case to do so. So part of that compelling business case with regard to metro lights is making sure that it's very, very clear what the plans are and who's going to benefit and who's going to pay, who's going to administer it, and who's going to audit it, all that sort of thing as far as trans being transparent and accountable. But it's very, very clear. We, we, we have to drill down from the high-level work that Metrolinx has done. We have to drill it down to the local communities so it can be sold in the local communities. And, and we can look at different circumstances in each community and state how individuals, using examples, is going to benefit. And I don't think we've done that yet. We've, we've got a lot of work yet to do. We've had great conversations so far. Uh, we have to keep going. Mayor Henry, Mayor Goldring, how about the list of options? What do you like? One option we haven't heard about today is the federal government. You know, we're the only country in the G8 that doesn't have really meaningful federal presence in the whole area. We'll work on that, we'll see what happens. But uh, I think we're going to need a suite of different options to consider. I think there may be a, a blending of, of different options, and the blending would have different percentages in different municipalities. But you know, we heard discussion from the Ontario Chamber of Commerce earlier about the importance of this particular uh, issue in Ontario, all of Ontario business. So that means to me that there's potential for some sort of increase in the sales tax as long as that those dollars are specifically allocated to uh, the big move. And that would be a province-wide sales tax to some degree. And then you need to look at the roads bolts, you need to look at the parking levies, uh, you need to look at uh, fuel tax, uh, and some of the other things. Okay, a couple follow-ups here. Number one, you mentioned the federal involvement. Mike Wallace is your MP, yes. and he's part of the Conservative government. Yes. Did you talk to him about this? Oh, sure. What's he saying? He smiles. <laughs> And why is that fun? Because he knows it's not going to happen in his view. In his view. Is he in favor of it happening? Uh, he hasn't said anything. He said the odds are very slim and nothing's going to change. So I think you know, we have an opportunity today uh, and all the other uh, forms we have uh, to raise this issue and keep continuing to raise uh, the issue for the federal government stepping in because they do, they are far better off than the province of Ontario. Okay, second follow up is by having, as a municipal official, advocating a, an increase in the provincial sales tax. One could argue that is not a particularly courageous political position to take. You're advocating somebody else raise tax, rate, tax rates and take the heat for it, as opposed to something at the municipal level. Fair, fair to say? I'm not, I'm not sure it's fair to say. Um, I will say this, that, that uh, I mentioned you know, the wide range of benefit of, of, of business benefiting from improved transportation in the, in the GTA. Um, we have to drill it down though to our local municipalities and really talk about the benefits to our local municipalities. So I look at Burlington and the fact that we are the oldest city in the GTA with 17% over 65 and 45% over 45. We are the slowest growing municipality in the GTA. Um, in terms of population. In terms of population from residential growth. So we have a challenge with an older population that is less um, inclined for property tax increases uh, and as well, we, don't have, we do not have the assessment growth that we once had. So we have to look at things differently. So one of the things that we're advocating in Burlington, we've advocated or directed our Economic Development Corporation is we want 29,000 new jobs in Burlington. So we're going to have 29,000 new jobs in Burlington because that's going to help our offset the increases in the uh, uh, residential property tax. If we're going to advocate for that, if we're going to have that happen, we need to have improved. Uh, regional transportation for that to happen. As much as we want to get a lot of those jobs from Burlington, we don't need people to be able to do. So I see the benefits very wide ranging. I think I need to hear Mayor Burton on the, uh, the list of options and which ones you like. 